one thing we always like to end these conferences on is, is with a bit of a look forward and um, a bit of an insight into, into maybe something on the horizon that people can, uh, you know, get their heads around and maybe, maybe look into for the year ahead. And when we were doing this, um, we were looking at different things. We were looking at tech, we were looking at skills as well. And one area in which we saw those things come together is in um, UX and user experience design and user interface design, um, which there's so many prevailing trends that seem to relate that, that some of which have come off the back of the pandemic, some of which have developed independently. Um, it just felt like a really relevant topic. And as luck would have it, we're very, very fortunate to have two people um, involved with a very, very exciting um, upcoming uh, initiative program uh, regarding UX and, um, and skills. So I would uh, love to introduce, please, um, to, to join us, uh, Dr. Kirsty Fairclough from Manchester Metropolitan University School of Digital Arts and Matt Harney from uh, Apadme. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good stuff. Now, I know, Kirsty, you've got to hire Matt. You've got to go at one o'clock. So um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the order a little bit and, and give you an opportunity just to come to hear more um, about the School uh, of Digital Arts. And one thing that you wrote in particular was, was, was that you see the school's mission, not just support through the pandemic, but to help create the next generation of digital storytellers. How do you see the, the, the university's role in that playing out? And what is it about digital storytelling and uh, UX and things like that that, that that sort of justifies this kind of uh, investment? Sure, I think it might be um, useful if I just explain a bit about SODA because not everybody is um, super familiar with, with SODA's mission and what we're attempting to do. So we open uh, next September, so um, that's uh, the School of Digital Arts within uh, Manchester Metropolitan University and um, essentially we are, we have uh, the investment has come from kind of half from GMCA and half from uh, Manchester Metropolitan and we're a very ambitious uh, future media school. Um, we are, uh, as I said, opening next September in a new iconic building which is right in the heart of Manchester's uh, city centre of the campus um, which is already a thriving uh, area as we know. Um, what's exciting about SODA is that we are bringing together the notion of, well, things that Manchester is amazing at, which is innovation and creativity. Um, and that's really the heart of um, SODA's identity. It's about future storytelling, about bringing multidisciplinary sets of skills together, almost like a kind of um, digital playground. So that there's a lot of industry connectivity, a lot of freedom for the students and for a business that we're, you know, we're partnering with to engage in kind of developing ideas and testing them out. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really so excited about the whole Soda project and we've got an amazing group of uh, industry champions uh, as part of our industry advisory group and that's headed up by Oscar winning film director Danny Boyle and by uh, Nicola Schindler, who I'm sure many people from Manchester will know, uh, who uh, was the founder of Red Productions and has moved on to Studio Canal and some amazing TV production work. Um, yeah, so we've got a really exciting group of people who are kind of helping us shape um, the direction of the curriculum and it's just that in a connection with industry that's really really important for us and we're spanning UX, um, games design, games art, uh, emergent technologies, uh, film production, animation, um, yeah there's a kind of photography, there's a whole set of, uh, of um, different subjects but everybody works together and that's kind of the, the main USP that there is that multidisciplinary sense of collaboration which SODA is really all about and I'll shut up now because I'll, I'll end up <laughs> using the whole 10 minutes. Oh, no. Brilliant. It's really interesting to hear about. And uh, yeah, as I say, very, very exciting. So you, you I would love to be involved in any of those. Animation, <laughs> 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 film, One of those video, things. And right on, you, you, know, you mentioned um, it's got a really strong backing of, of, of employer um, advisory board, you know, surrounding it and, and people from industry, people from, from the creative industries, mm. including uh, firms like Apadme, Matt. Um, so I wondered if you could just speak briefly about how... Um, you know the relationship why this is beneficial to businesses why you think businesses should support things like this and how you think they can actually make the most of things like this um well we've we've actually got a couple of our students enrolled on on the uh, the apprenticeship courses um at mmu um so straight away we've seen the value in this uh, from the get-go um these these particular people are um already have you know, some um, UX UI um, experience, um, 
but they, they've kind of sort of transitioned or pivoting from different areas. One particular one that I'm is in my team coming from um, uh, sort of uh, VR design, that kind of stuff, kind of 3D thing. So, so he's he's he jumped to this opportunity, um, and 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 it's going to it's going to really improve his skill set. Um, and and I think you know the Manchester is is becoming more and more you know a, a center for technology. Um, if not, well, it already is, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, and you know, courses like this uh, just become a, a great resource for 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 people to learn and and also you know go ideally straight into employment. You know, the connections that MMU I I personally have benefited because I went to MMU. Mm. Um, I I benefited from the connections that MMU have to industry, and I went straight from a degree straight into to a pub me. Brilliant. And so I guess the question for, for both of you in a way, just to, just to kind of really underline it, what, what do you think it is about these disciplines? You know, you mentioned, Kirsty, how, how broad the teaching offering is, mm -hmm. um, but they're all, they're all related to a lot of it is visual arts, a lot of it is creative, creative and digital arts. What makes that so important to, to, and so relevant to, to people's lives, careers and, and, and the economy in, in you know, just an easy question to, to kind of, just a light-hearted one for 10 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for me, I think storytelling is at the heart of everything, isn't it? No matter what you do and what, what um, industry you're working in, you know, the notion of telling a story, whether that's you branding your business and you're telling that story or, you know, you're working within the creative industries that are literally telling uh, all kinds of stories. I think this, the notion of that is so, so important. And... Um, yeah, I think that the soda is in a really, really amazing place right now to really help um, not just, you know, GM, but also the region and kind of um, and the nation, I, I, we're thinking, you know, it's kind of putting, it's putting um, that idea of future storytelling right at the very heart of what we do and looking for the next kind of emergent technology. Just to give you an example, we've just recently been working with a couple of SMEs, uh, one of which is Forever Holdings, on a project where uh, it's kind of VR immersive storytelling project, which is a, we won a million pounds Innovate UK funding to develop this um, piece of work that um, that essentially works with, uh, well, we work with Niall Rogers, who's amazing to work with, but to create an immersive experience so that you are, you feel like you're talking to that, um, to him. So it's kind of, it was called the audience with a hero project. So that idea that new experiences, new ways of telling stories, you know, you can use that eventually, we can use that to launch an album so that you can have a conversation with Niall Rogers and find out about his kind of creative process. So that idea of, you know, storytelling through a lot of different emergent technologies and existing technologies and Blending, blending those is really what kind of the whole soda project is about. And that's a long winded way of, of mm. <laughs> explaining it. It's true though, that that multi-channel approach is, has been used in marketing for quite a while, hasn't it? I, I, I saw a case study recently of, um, it was, was Jay-Z and Bing. It was like almost 10 years ago where they, um, they used this incredible multi-channel thing where they published his book in all these different locations all around the state and got people to, to go out there, generate user-generated content, and it was all brought together, obviously, to benefit Jay-Z and Bing, but uh, mm. it was it, that that kind of um, storytelling way of doing things. It just it just increases that personalization with the brand. And certainly from the UX, and you, you knew the experience now, it, it doesn't seem to cut it as quite as much just to be, um, you know, doing user personas and... and um, and, and getting nice user journeys, you know, it has to be backed up with that sort of personal approach, you know, that the, the, wherever the, the story behind the, the product or the service, if, if, if we can bring the emotion from that, you know, why, why this is being done and getting that across to, to the customers, to the users, then that, that connection is, is, is a really strong bond. Yeah, absolutely. And just to say that so does, you know, it's industry connectivity is really, really important. Um, so, you know, we're always looking already looking for partners, anyone who wants to got, you know, ideas that they want to test out around that very broad idea of, of storytelling. Um, what's amazing about Soda is that we have this um, uh, way of a model, I suppose, it's called the collabs, where the um, entire, um, no matter what course you're on, everybody stops their kind of formal teaching and they all work together on a project that can be, you know, it could be any industry comes in and says we need this 
product developing or whatever, so that we work together with the, uh, the business, we work together with our researchers, our staff and all of our students to get that really kind of, um, yeah, amazing kind of range of different perspectives. And it's a, a place to also, you know, test out ideas and, and also fail because you only learn through failing and, you know, it's the way we grow, isn't it? So, so yeah, that's uh, another thing, another thing to ask to mm -hmm. kind of bring into the mix about soda. And it's very interesting. We've, we've heard all day how um, storytelling is, you know, it's been one of the key themes of, 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 of today's uh, content, I think. Um, and one of the ways in which uh, stories are told is through the, the, the design of the user experience, you know, through, through design. And um, so I was just wondering, we've, no, we've noticed this year there have been, you know, some trends that have been um, a product of the pandemic, some trends that have been accelerated by it, um, some that have been slowed by it. But, but what do we think are going to be the abiding sort of um, legacy design principles that come out of, or, or customer experience principles that come out of the pandemic? Um, <laughs> go on. Go on, Kirsten. No, I'll leave that one to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, I think, I think almost from the get-go, the, the messages, the messaging in general, um, coming from um, companies uh, was was more empathetic. Um, it was more personal, um, and I think people were addressing customer safety, and, and that, of course, is is always going to build trust. Um, I, I mean, trust is a is a really powerful thing generally in 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 digital. You know, with with things like privacy and things like that. Um, it's and, and it's, it seems to be more and more of a, of, of a thing that, that, that people need to be careful of when they're putting these services together. Um, you know, we've just seen something talking about Facebook and, and Twitter, how, how they're handling that kind of stuff. But, but yeah, but, but, but in, in this case, we actually have physical um, uh, welfare. To, had to, you know, companies have to take that into consideration. And I think being seen to be responsible is also a, a very important thing, it, you know, um, the, the, the wider implications of that for, for your brand is, is important. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, businesses solving you know, customer problems. Um, and obviously by doing that, they're helping their business succeed. Some businesses that haven't been able to kind of make the transition for, you know, maybe the, you know, the sector didn't, but it's like hospitality, for example, um, you know, they've suffered, but other ones that have been able to make a transition to, to more digital channels have, have thrived, you know, even, even pubs that, that had no one through the doors were some of them that were able to, to create online presences and, and they've, they've sold more beer than they've <laughs> ever, ever before. They've been run off the yeah. beat. Um, quite a few yeah, yeah. Um, hospitality businesses have successfully sort of pivoted into takeaways and uh, delivery type businesses, you know. Exactly, yeah. So but even gyms, like, for example, gyms have, um, you know, you'd think, well, can't do anything, but they you know, they, they, they've been online Zoom yeah. stuff or, 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 you know, some have actually made, uh, little apps you know where so they can channel it straight through there so th there's lots of opportunity um and in a way it's 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 increased that speed yeah well um kirsty i know you've got to um be off for one so i'd just like to say thank you at this point um matt if you could stay on for one more question i'd love that and just just pick your brains on a, on a final one kirsty thank you for telling us about soda if anyone would like more information please um you can contact Kirsty on Twitter and the internet, or you can come through Pro Manchester for those details as well. Uh, but thank you, Kirsty. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Cheers. Um, Matt, just finally then, um, to, to, to wrap this panel up, because there might be some people watching this who are feeling a bit inspired, or they are sensing something on their radar here with, with digital storytelling and UX design and those, ki those kinds of um, disciplines. And we've, we're in interesting times now because we've they're a combination of people that are obviously looking to stay relevant within their skill sets, but there are people also looking to retrain potentially and look at new routes. So I just um, wondered if you had any advice for someone who was um, either starting out their career or even at the midpoint somewhere around careers in UX and, and, and around the type of things that agencies like Apadme do. Yeah, um, I, I think, I think, uh user experience actually you know the the, the kind of this industry or sector within the larger industries is quite quite expansive in a way there's a lot of areas um where people can come in on depending on where their original you know skills lie um 
you know, at a, at a Padme, we we ha we sort of have sort of that kind of T shape kind of thing where we all kind of can do a bit of of the the fundamentals, and then you know we we have the main one that we we generally work in with with some other specialization. But um, I think you know a lot of UX is common sense, and a lot of it is is empathy. Um, you know you have to genuinely want to to create better experiences, uh, solve problems. So it is problem solving through design, but it, you don't necessarily, it, it is creative, but you don't have to be able to draw, you know, that, that, that's a, that's a fairly good starting point for some people who, who might want to move into, into the tech industry. Um, so if you are a problem solver already, you know, and, and you, you, you have creative solutions, that kind of stuff, then, then th th there is a way in, um, it, it, Gem, it, it, there's also the, um, uh, more academic side of stuff where, you know, the researching, uh, side that that's huge. Um, the, uh, you know, customer behavior research is, is, is quite academic, but it can, it can make massive improvements to, um, to services, uh, and businesses. Uh, I saw a talk uh, last year, um, where a team had, has looked at, um, I can't remember which airline it was in, in the, in the U S but they'd, uh, they, they looked at how they were displaying information and, and how people were obviously taking this information on board and, and, and the larger um, environment that they were using the systems in. And, and, and they found some absolute gold in there and, and, and increased the, the airline's profitability massively. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if, if you're in graphic design, it's, it's probably a more easier transition because um, you're already problem solving, uh, you're already, already understanding need, that kind of stuff. So that overlap is really where UX can sit. Um, yeah, and in terms of how, how you would start, um, you can go on the, the soda courses, um, <laughs> or you can, um, the, 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 there's a wealth of information online. Um, there's some really good resources out there already. Um, I, I think that, that, you know, the, the best starting point is if you're genuinely interested, start reading about it, start, start seeing where, where you can make connections and where, you know, and, and, and then, you know, in terms of getting in the industry, it's the, the tech industry, it's certainly in a pad meet, we're, we're always looking for, for new talent. Um, and, you know, we're happy to take people on who, who, who might need some training up, you know, if, if they're showing that, that sort of um, uh, enthusiasm and, and that, in, you know, we can see that they've, they've got a, I think the, uh, the potential. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's important. The important thing to say is, you know, because I was quite, uh, my eyes were opened a little bit to the to the variety of roles you know that exist within the within the space, and it's important that people realize you know design is a, is a beneficial background, but actually if you're a problem solver by nature and, and you can apply creative thought to mm -hmm. problems, then um, really the job is about making people's lives easier through design, and um, and I'd, I'd, and I'd I'd say that was for me one of the another of the themes of the day. You know we we've, we've had storytelling, we've had the importance of like understanding your customers and shaping things around them and we've talked about that quite a lot from a content point of view but obviously design as well is really important so mm. um we're, we're we're just about out of time i would i would recommend everyone um just have a look at ux because the principles behind it actually if you, you know that like matt said they're common sense and it's one of those things that um you know the the, the making people's lives easier reducing the friction between um businesses and brands or, or service providers and brands, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be all the more important, I think, in the, in the next 12 months. Um, so thank you uh, again to Matt and, and to, and to Kirsty as well, who joined us earlier on the panel. Um, it just, uh, it's just left to me then to um, basically wrap up the day in a, in a typically stuttering fashion. Thank you everyone. Um, who joined us this morning. It's been, I think, really enlightening, really interesting. Um, and I want to just say a massive thank you to all our speakers, everyone who took part today, and Virgin Money, the sponsors as well. Once again, thank you. Um, in the mean, I will, <laughs> Dan Nolan is God there from, from Steve K. Thank you, Steve. Um, I will bid you farewell. Enjoy your afternoons. And we look forward to seeing you again soon at another Pro Manchester conference. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>